Jason, Ning is an unusual name, so why don't we start with it? What does it stand for and what is Ning? Well, so Ning is the largest platform in the world for creating your own custom social network. So whether you're an organization or a nonprofit or a, uh, a large band like Linkin Park, uh, what we're finding is that people from all around the world, as social media has really taken off, want to create their own branded social destinations. And Ning is a platform that lets people do that very easily. Okay, so th throw some other names of clients big and small at me besides the rock bands. Yeah, so we, uh, one of the exciting things about the, the company and the business is that we really span across a large spectrum. So we have thousands of educators who are using Ning, uh, high school teachers, college professors who are using Ning to connect with other educators and their students right in the classroom. Uh, we have a big footprint of nonprofit, so uh, everyone from Eve Ensler who uh, runs vday.org to, help, to uh, help stop violence against women to the Pickens Plan, which is evangelizing uh, clean energy across, uh, across the United States are, are on the Ning platform. Uh, lots and lots of small businesses from uh, people like Sake Social to local realtors who are uh, using Ning and, and the social aspects of the website to, rather than just inform their customers as they might with a traditional website, they're really using it to connect and interact and get customer feedback. Um, and the list goes on and on to politicians, to major entertainment properties like the Twilight books and movies. Uh, today, tens of thousands of people uh, creating social destinations on Ning. Now, I understand this past summer you went from being mostly free to being all paid. Can you describe that transition? We were in two different businesses. We had a free ad-supported business and we had a premium subscription business. And we made the decision uh, over the summer to focus 100% of the energy of the company behind our, uh, our premium subscription business. And so have just completed a process in which uh, our, our active free communities were able to select from a range of monthly subscription fl plans and, uh, and trans transition over. And one of, the, one of the most interesting things that came out of that is 90% of our total traffic, our total end users that were touching Ning who were on the service when we were both free and paid have now migrated to the paid service. So how many, how many individual users is that? So it's how many were paying before and how many are paying now? So from a, from a total traffic perspective, we touch about 80 million uniques globally every single month. 80 million unique visitors come to a site on Ning. What we saw uh, in terms of uh, network creators, people who create and run social networks on Ning, is we had about 15,000 who were paying before. Uh, and, and we now have over 70,000 paying subscribers. So, uh, you know, more than a more than a 5x increase uh, in terms of uh, in terms of our paying subscription base. You've raised a fair amount of money for a for a for a startup company or for a for a pre-public company, private company, what have you. Um, are you profitable? Uh, interesting. You should ask. So, our our plan is. Uh, to reach long-term sustained profitability mid next year, but we were actually uh, profitable in August and uh, will be so again in September. And this was a surprise to you because of the shift? Of this, the was, uh, this was a, a result of how successful our transition to the pay paid plans were. Huh. So you sort of, I know you don't want to call it a surprise, you don't want to say you accidentally became profitable, but it's, it wasn't in the plan because you're investing. That's right. You've raised more than $100 million. So you've got to make a lot of profits over the next 100 years to, uh, to, to make back that money, right? And we think we're, we're well on the uh, trajectory to be able to do that.